Hey everyone, this is Daryl and I am excited! I was doing some playing around and figured out a way to get a direct ethernet connection between my computer and the force to work. So that's super cool since we don't have a USB connection, but why would you really want to do this if you have a working connection? Maybe you don't have a router, maybe your Wi-Fi is really slow and powerline ethernet isn't going to work for you. Or if your force works great in standalone mode, but for whatever reason can't stay connected to your router and you've tried everything, maybe this is for you. So some caveats are groundwork. Your computer's Wi-Fi has to be connected to something since we're bridging the Wi-Fi and Ethernet adapters to make this work. You might not be able to access your force given the wired IP in this process from other devices, so keeping the Wi-Fi in standalone mode will always give you a secondary means to connect. For whatever reason, Windows is kind of slowpoke doing this, but OS X is really fast, so just be patient. If everything's working fine for you, don't do this. It's a little bit of a hack, and if it's not necessary, just don't do it. And I recommend watching the whole video, whether you're a Windows or Mac user, uh, you might pick up something that you didn't catch for your particular scenario. For this scenario, we're going to assume that your Wi-Fi is in standalone mode or connected to your Wi-Fi network and your Ethernet is in DHCP mode. So go ahead and connect the cable between the force and your computer, then connect to your force and open C3. Just so I have something to compare, I'm going to ping the force over the Wi-Fi connection first and then later do it over the wire connection once it's set up and see if the times differ. So it looks like we're at 6-5 milliseconds with a little spike to 15. So let's do a little bit of networking setup. Go ahead and open System Preferences, then click Sharing. Make sure you're sharing your connection from Wi-Fi and to Ethernet, then check the Internet Sharing box and click Start. Now let's go back to the status page and we can monitor and see when we get an IP address assigned to the wire connection. Just keep refreshing the page until one appears. Alright, so we got one. Now use that to access C3 over the wire connection. And it looks like that works, so let's go ahead and try pinging that IP address and see if the times differ. And yes they do, quite a bit faster. So let's be a little adventurous and I'm going to connect to my normal Wi-Fi and see if I can still access the force over the same IP address. I should be able to since it's connected directly to my computer. And it looks like it does. Yep, status page still loads and I can still ping the IP address and still getting the fast ping times. Awesome. For this next scenario, we're going to assume that you've reset your network settings by pulling and replacing the USB Wi-Fi adapter and that there is not a network cable connected to your force while it's booting up. So let's first get things set up in networking, open system preferences, then click sharing, Click Internet Sharing, make sure it's Wi-Fi to Ethernet, then click Internet Sharing to enable it, click Start, and you're done. Go ahead and connect the cable between your force and the computer. And now we're ready to connect to the k, &K Force Recovery Wi-Fi network. When the configuration window opens, just leave the settings as default, which means Wi-Fi in standalone mode and uh, your wire connection with DHCP on. You can set a password if you want, but leave everything else the same. Then click OK and wait for uh, the k, k Force Recovery Network to disconnect, then reappear and reconnect to it. I sped things up here a little bit just to save time. After you reconnect to the k, &K Force Recovery Network, C3 will show you the wired IP address that was assigned to your force. Make a note of that, copy it to your clipboard, then click Save These Settings and Continue. So the Mac creates a little mini network. Notice that my IP address is 192.168.2.2. My normal network would be 192.168.1.2, for example. So just something to note. 
So let's go ahead and reconnect to our force. If you're using the force in standalone mode, connect to the KNK force network. If you've got a normal Wi-Fi network, go ahead and connect to that. All right, now that we're connected, let's open Chrome and try our brand new IP address. And that looks like that worked. Let's check the status tab. And there's all our settings. And let's go ahead and check our ping times again. Yep, we're definitely talking to the force over an ethernet cable. For Windows, you need to have things set up a little bit more beforehand. There should not yet be a network cable plugged into your force, and if you've reset your network settings, make sure you're already able to connect to the KNK Force network. So let's go ahead and connect to our force now, and right-click the Start menu and select Network Connections. This is the same screen you'll see if you open the Network Sharing Center and click Change Adapter Settings. So go ahead and highlight your Wi-Fi and Ethernet adapters and click Bridge Connections. Windows will now do that, and it's also a good time to connect the cable uh, between your computer and your force. If you get an error here, just delete the new network bridge that Windows creates in this step and reboot your computer, then recreate the bridge. That'll probably fix it. To find out the IP address that was assigned to your force, you can uh, open your web browser and try going to knk-force.local. Uh, you can connect to it in standalone mode to the KNK Force Wi Fi network and then look at the status tab. Uh, or you can also log into your router and see uh, if you can determine what it is in there. The KNK Force local address worked for me, so I can go to the status tab and look and see what the IP address is. There it is. And note that it's also uh, using the .1.1 gateway, unlike the Mac did. So remember, your Wi-Fi adapter has to be connected to something. The KNK Force network is fine, but since we're bridging the Ethernet and Wi-Fi connections, both of them have to be active. And as it's been since the beginning of time, Windows loves a reboot, so do that if you have any problems and just try again. And static IP addresses are fine, since Windows uses your normal IP format, if you already have a static IP address configured for your Wi-Fi connection, um, it'll probably still work. But use DHCP first so you can see what addresses are getting assigned to your force so you can use those to determine what the appropriate ones would be for your static IP. And I'm sure there are other ways to set this up, but for now that's it. And I hope this is really helpful and I'm super excited about it and I hope you are too. Have a great day.